Hey guys, welcome back to my series where I am trying to go very specifically into different subjects from our homeschool and talk about how I approach them, how I teach them in my homeschool. So of course, this is very much what we do. I'm not expecting you to copy me or anything like that, but as a mom of five with an 11 year old all the way down to a three year old, and not just like one science book, but many books in our science curriculum um, or other subjects might be similar. I often get asked, you know, how do you, how do you use all the books or how do you have time for them all? Or what, you know, do you have your three-year-old do science with you? Or what do you have your kids do and things like that? So this is hopefully to address those kinds of questions, to help you feel more confident in how you approach science and to just make it more clear what I actually do. Because let's be real, when I do a curriculum haul and I talk about like, I got all these books for science, it can seem really overwhelming, but I don't actually use all of these books every single day. So let me jump in. I'm gonna move these aside and start with these. Let me zoom in a teeny bit more. So as I already detailed in the SAS in the SAS for us, in the curriculum haul videos that I did at the beginning of the year, I chose the Sassafras Science Adventures. What's really cool is this is actually a novel. It's a living book filled with information about botany. It's part of a series. Uh, you do need to do them in order because the characters in the plot continue. There's kind of like a mystery. Uh, that runs through all of the books. So if you were to just jump into the botany one, then you would be a little bit confused and not understand why there are these children with magic zip lines going from country to country to study plants or anatomy or zoology in their natural habitats. So definitely wanna read them in order. Uh, you definitely, if you're gonna use this as a curriculum, I highly recommend also getting the guide because this is going to give you ways to kind of take it from just reading an amazing adventure that has a lot of scientific information and how to turn it into a curriculum that you feel like I can check it off at the end of the day that my children have actually studied and learned something. So this is what I do. I am focusing right now at the beginning of the school year as I'm trying to figure out how to use this curriculum and get our rhythm for the year. I'm just focusing on reading the chapter each week and doing our notebooking. Those are the two main things. So let me kind of walk you through this. I did mention I have um, an 11 year old down to a three year old. So I have uh, an 11 year old, nine-year-old, six-year-old, five-year-old, and three-year-old. And I only require my two older ones to participate in science. And I'm sort of 50% of the time having my six-year-old join us if she's already gone off to play or if she asks to go play like the younger two kids. Then I'll say, no, you need to sit with us while I read the book or something like that. Cause I'm starting to introduce her to more subjects and she, you know, she's getting a little bit older and I'm trying to get her involved in a little bit more. So on a Monday, I read about half of the chapter, maybe three quarters. It's our heaviest reading day. Now the chapters are a little bit longer or at least, um, I mean, it's like a novel. So the chapters can be like 20 pages long, which doesn't sound like much, but it could take up to an hour to read aloud. So I cannot seem to fit an entire chapter during our actual morning and school time. If I was reading it at lunch while the kids were eating or later in the day for fun, then we'd have plenty of time. But I'm, I'm reading it during school hours, so to speak, so we can have our you know, our school brains switched on and I can ask them questions and we're not passively reading, we're actively listening and actively reading. So I get about halfway through the chapter and usually that will introduce us to the first of two specific plants in our botany book. So the chapter we were in, we only got halfway through today and we uh, learned about roses. And then when I pick up and read tomorrow, we're gonna be learning about hedges 
So what we did today is I read and usually what happens is the kids, my two older kids, will sketch the rose or whatever the plant is in their notebooks. I have all of this listed in my description box, by the way, where I got the curriculum. A lot of things are on an Amazon list or link you to the website. This is an Anna Vance paper coat. Um, it's not a sketchbook, but we're using it as one because at the top is blank paper and at the bottom is lined paper and it's perfect for a sketch and then for them to record some scientific details about whatever plant it is. So while I'm reading, this is the orchid from a couple chapters ago, and they draw this, my older two, while I'm reading. It's a great pastime. It does not cause distractions, and they're able to do that and listen. So one of the things I did purchase right away at the beginning of the school year when I bought this curriculum and knew this is what I was going to use is I found 100 flowers and plants, and it has these step-by-step -step drawings. And I love that they're very nice detailed drawings, but they're also just a few steps. They're not overwhelming. So they have used these several times for different plants that we have drawn. Um, one time I had to pull in another resource that I have. I'll talk about that later more specifically, but it was this book um, when we needed to look up a mushroom to draw. We had to get it from this book. So they do that, and at the end of my reading, I use the information here. So it says information learned, and it lists some facts that were covered in the book. Again, this is a novel, so it's really important, I think, to review this material, the actual facts about each of the plants that we learned about. And I use these either as review questions, like it has a statement, roses have a tough woody stem that often has thorns on it. I might say um, something like, Evan, can you please tell me one of the characteristics of a rose that we learned about in our chapter today? And then all of these um, answers here are characteristics of the rose. Or I might say, we learned about what kind of stem roses have, will you please describe that to me? So I can use it either way. Different kids of mine are better at different types of questions or narration versus prompted questions. So I, I try to work with them a little bit and we use some time after the chapter to discuss this and review this because these are the facts and the information we learned about the rose. And then my kids use this book here where it says roses, it's the name of the plant. So again, I know this is a different plant, but it names the plant. It says division and it will have what division, flowering or non-flowering, preferred habitat. So the rainforest for an orchid, forests and gardens for a rose, where it's distributed. This is worldwide for a, an orchid and for a rose native to Asia, Europe, and North America, and it's cultivated worldwide. So just little, little itty bits of information in that way. So that's what they copy down in their notebooks. And then on Tuesday, our second day of science, um, we usually have to finish the chapter and there's a usually a second, oh, am I in frame? Almost not, sorry. Hopefully I was in frame enough during all of that. Uh, there's usually a second plant and they sketch while I'm reading and the same thing. We'll review any vocabulary we learned. I'll use the information learned section underneath here as a way to get narration, to use review questions and to discuss um, and even reteach sometimes the information that are the, the pieces that are factual about the plants. Um, because it can be exciting to remember the characters and the plot line of the story and it can be harder to retain and remember the information about the plant. So I love that little review. So that's usually the second day. I don't typically do anything else because I just don't have time for it in our allotted school time. But if I do, one of the other things I'll pull out is the First Nature Encyclopedia, which is one of the four recommended encyclopedias by the curriculum. Where are we? Here we are. And they recommend these ones um, because they correspond so well with the chapter. So if you're 
you know, if you're talking about the desert and desert plants, then it might have you come to this spread. I like this particular one. I happen to have it on the shelf, so I didn't have to purchase one because this is something that my younger kids might look at if they're in the room and participating. I don't require them to participate, only my older two. Um, this is a way to kind of keep them quiet and entertained and engaged is to look at the page from the chapter. And then of course, <laughs> within seconds, they're usually flipping through the book and enjoying it. So I do pull this out. Um, I might also pull that out on Thursday. So for us, the days that we do science are Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And if I don't get to something like this on Monday and Tuesday, then I try to do it first thing on Thursday. Another thing that's great about this curriculum is how it just handles geography naturally. So part of the whole plot of the entire book series is twins Blaine and Tracy are staying with their uncle for the summer and their uncle's a crazy mad scientist and he invented invisible zip lines. So they hook up to these invisible zip lines and they zip to all of these different countries and they learn about the area of science in its natural habitat for the zoology and animals um, from a local expert when they were doing anatomy and then in its natural biome here in botany and so on. And so what's great is on Thursday, we take some time to look at a map or an atlas and I have great resources um, linked below and in my curriculum videos. And we'll take a, a peek at where we just were. So roses are in Scotland. That's where they're talking about them. We'll find Scotland on the map. We'll look at it. We just came from the rainforest in Peru. And um, there's a little map right here. Not every page in the teacher manual has a map. Um, so it's nice to be able to look, look there or look in an atlas. What else? Oh, the other thing that I have not had time for in the first couple of weeks and I am making time for now are these scientific demonstrations. Now these are a little bit less work than a project, um, which there's multi-week projects and activities that you can do. You can make like a tissue paper rose, you can go on a flower hunt, um, you could do a hedge maze if you're near one, um, you can do some microscope work. So there's different kinds of activities with different levels of involvement. Some are more experiment, some are more nature walk oriented, some are more craft oriented. And I like these scientific demonstrations. So this you're gonna dissect a rose and it has a little bit of a procedure. Um, you just need a rose, a magnifying glass and a knife. And I purchased when I bought the curriculum, you can get science kits and it comes with many of the materials that you need for a scientific demonstration. So it didn't include a knife because everybody's got a knife in their home and it didn't include the rose because it would die, but it came with the magnifying glass and I don't know, a styrofoam cup and some plastic spoons for another one and a rubber band for another one and a safety pin for another one and things you may or may not have, um, but that the book calls for for the demonstrations. So on Thursday, is kind of a wrap-up day and I'll review vocabulary if I haven't and make sure the kids remember what we learned. I'll pull out the encyclopedia if we haven't had a chance to look at that. We'll try to do the scientific demonstration and then that's also the day where I might pull in some of my extra resources. So I already kind of showed this one. I have this one on the shelf. It's all kinds of nature so it's not just plants but there's many beautiful spreads about plants in here and just having it out for my kids to flip through or finding a page that talks about what we just, what related to what we just did, um, not making it too formal, not making it too stressful or crazy, but just pulling it out. So I have this one, um, a couple of others that I had on my shelf. I love trying to find books like this one where they're just great picture books. They have beautiful illustrations and they give you some information about seeds or about plants or, um, I love that they're making wonderful picture books now that are biographies. So you can find famous botanists or people who contributed so much to plants or whatever related to whatever science you're studying. 
and you can have picture book, book versions of biographies. And I really find those helpful because it's not too much information and yet I can bring in a little bit more life to our science and round it out a little bit more. So maybe a picture book like this, maybe something like that. I try to find some from the library and just have a ton on hand. Um, but as I mentioned, I'm kind of in a season right now where good enough is good enough and it's on my list, but I'm not kicking myself for not having it right away when we started school. Um, another flower book that I just had on my shelf, just different things. These are a great little series. They're um, take along guides. I got them from thrift books. You can find them all sorts of places. I think I have them in my Amazon links. Um, what's cool is there's crafts in here. You can make a wildflower paperweight. So if you want to incorporate nature walks, um, you can study the science, you can study the chapter, you can go on nature walks, and then you can come back and do things with the things you maybe saw or collected. So some of these, well, I think that was a rose right there. So a wild rose, um, we could look at this, um, just different information, a different type of rose than maybe what we're used to seeing it look like. Is it even in the rose family actually? Who knows? Um, so all sorts of things. I have those. And then the last thing for science is, oops, sorry, I just bumped the tripod, the, uh, the table leg there. Hopefully it's not, not like making you seasick. One of the last things that I try to incorporate as um, connecting to history or science or both is maybe a piece of literature like this or a read aloud. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not having a ton of time to read like an additional read aloud because our science is basically a read aloud. Our history, which we also do Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday is also essentially a read aloud. And there's other subjects and other things that we touch on and read throughout our school day. For instance, we're doing some Shakespeare, um, we're doing a little bit of poetry. So honestly, I don't need to add in read aloud. This is not our only time of reading aloud. And so this, uh, we've barely gotten like two or three chapters. Oh, maybe four. We've gotten them four chapters, I think, into this book um, over the whole year, just because I don't have a whole lot of time. And I think one thing I remember from last year and previous years is right now is the transition from summer to fall. And so it's beautiful outside. We love being outside. And once it gets really cold and it starts snowing because it snows where we live, we spend so much more time indoors and it gets dark sooner. And so we read a lot more in those winter months. So it's something that I have, but it's not something that's a necessity and I can work it in if and when I need to. Okay, guys, I think that was it. I think I touched on everything. I hope that was helpful. I did actually film this video multiple times because I just felt like I was not communicating as well as I could how I was actually taking all of this and breaking it down and teaching it. Um, my main thing is I stick with the most important stuff. I stick with the basics. I focus on the chapter, the review, and for us, the notebooking really brings it to life, ties it together, gives my kids something hands-on and something we can look at and kind of review. And then everything else is just extra and I use it when I can and when I need it. And I try not to stress too much about making sure I'm incorporating a ton of extra things instead just focusing on the main curriculum. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you found this helpful, be sure and check out how I teach history. I've also done how I teach math. I have some more subjects to cover in future videos and I will get those out to you soon. Plus general updates and other homeschool related videos every Wednesday morning. And if you're interested, I do planner content on Saturdays. That is kind of the other thing, the other topic I have here on my channel. All right, guys, I will see you in my next video. Bye.